let's download the mingw compiler. So we just type in mingw, go to here, mingw.org. And sometimes things are not perfect with, you know, checking the MD5 hashes. Like this thing over here, if we go to downloads, and then we go ahead and download the, the latest version. It's on SourceForge. It's open source. It seems safe and stuff like that. But we'll go ahead and download it. And you can see that it's. I've, this is downloading a second copy because I already have an original copy in there. Um, so now if I go to the downloads folder, I, I downloaded it twice essentially. That's why I made a copy. But if I take a look at that and I paste, you know, because on, the, on this website, Next to um, the downloads, you know, there's no, there's nothing on here that lists the MD5 hashes. You know, it just goes to SourceForge, and a lot of times on SourceForge they don't really list all of that stuff. So what I do is I just paste it and paste it, you know, and I, then I can kind of do a little investigation work. You know, there's a lot of antiviruses that have scanned stuff. This one comes up as having, you know, 46 scans, and out of that, there are potential two problems, you know. So it's this, uh, oh, that's a SHA-256. This is a really long algorithm. But it's still the MinGW, you know, setup 2. Oh, this is setup 2. I'm not sure if... Uh, That's the same thing, but it's still MinGW setup. You know, it still comes from the same website. So, you know, it's always nice to to have everything be green and be like all these things scanned and it's probably harmless. And that's what exactly what it says: probably harmless because Trend Micro scanned it. It came up with a Trojan or a potential Trojan, and I think in cases like this, it's probably safe because sometimes antiviruses actually make what they call false positives. So, uh, you know, they'll find problems even though there's really not a, a problem. Uh, but all of these other things didn't find any problems, you know, so it's like probably safe. Uh, looking over here at Kaspersky, which is a really good antivirus. Uh, you can see that it's the same exact MD5 hash, uh, MinGW setup, same thing. Um, mine says one over here because I made a copy, but it's you know trusted download. The other thing over here, and this is what how they really should do it on SourceForge. Um, Japan uh, in uh, you know different uh, countries are going to have their own SourceForge. If you look at the the Japanese um, SourceForge over here, translate this page. They're smart about this because they actually um, are a little more thorough. They actually pr provide the MD5 hash right over here as part of the download page. And in my opinion, this should be the prerequisite for downloading anything nowadays because things can be tampered with. But you can see that on the Japanese website, you know, it actually has the same MD5 hash as, as ours does. So they match up. So on their source forge, it has the same thing. So it's probably safe. So I know it's a lot to go through and stuff, but I kind of think that it's important to like make sure that everything is you know pretty safe. So these two copies, I'm just going to delete these because I already downloaded the original one, which was this MD5. Check the hash again because I'm a little neuro neurotic about making sure the hashes are the same. Yep. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just uh, go ahead and uh, uh, install it. And you can also scan it with your own antivirus. Um, you can go to like SpyBot and sp scan it with um, SpyBot. So install, you can view the license if you want. I don't feel like viewing your license. Um,
here we go. Here's the license. Uh, oh, setup. Oh, Microsoft redirected me. View license, submit request. If you wanted to view the license, you could. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and install. And I'm going to keep this directory the same. Uh, I'm just going to keep all these defaults the same. Press continue. And hopefully this doesn't take forever. I think it's going to ask me, um, do I want to install like uh, other things? All right, so it's stalling. I'm going to press continue. Okay, so this is where it goes. It, it, it's asking me, like, do I want to install? Um, this is the M MinGW installation manager. It's, it's wanting to know, like, what I want to install. So I want to definitely install C++ compiler, mark for installation. You can uh, do Fortran, Ada, I'm not really sure what that is. Basic MinGW installation. Uh, developer tools. Okay, so that's Mark. Um, Objective C compiler. Uh, we don't have to use this, but because I don't don't feel like installing it again, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, I don't really know Fortran or Ada. I kind of like to install everything, but uh, I don't. This is going to take a lot of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, apply changes. So now it's going to go ahead and start the installation. So here, I'm just going to like pause the video because I think it's going to take forever to do this. So I'm just going to pause it right now. Okay, we're back. So uh, we look at uh, this dialog box. All the changes were you know, applied successfully, so that means that it's all done. Uh, I chose to install all these things. Really, if you just wanted C++, you just need um, this one, the GNU C++ compiler. You don't need all this other stuff. So then we can just close it. We can close this. And then what we got to do is just go over here to um, where it was installed, MinGW, go to bin. And inside here is, is where is everything where you want. Okay, so what we're going to do um, is... Uh, because we don't want to like have to like uh, be in this directory, you know, like th this is what I mean. Um, you know, let's say for example we're going to do, if I go Command N, it's going to give me a new file. Um, control, sorry, Control N or Control S, depending on if you're on a Mac or not. Um, let's say I'm just going to go like hello.cpp, and then I'm just going to go include IO stream using namespace std int main and then return zero and then I'm going to go over here to uh, uh, see out hello world okay so that's our hello world program so now I'm just going to go over here to um, cmd I'm going to pin this to my taskbar so I can always have this. And then I'm going to, um, not sure, <clears throat> I have to, uh, I think, be in the same directory. Uh, min GW. In. Okay, so now if I go G++ and then I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, desktop. No. 
no. It's basically it's I'm trying to run this thing out of a different directory. I don't feel like you know you could go to this directory and actually then put your file in here and then you know go to mingw bin and then run it from here. But the easier way to do that is by just doing this. Because otherwise you spend too much time figuring out which command does what. Um, I just go to this directory and this directory right here inside the bin is the actual compiler. Okay, So in order for my desktop to see the compiler, because it's in a different directory, I have to make it global to the system. In order to make it global to the system, I just simply copy this directory right over here, and I'm going to enter it in my path in the environmental variables. So what you do is just go ahead and press Start, Control, System Properties, Advanced System Settings, Environmental Variables, and then come down here to Path, and be very, very careful with path. Don't mess it up. So what you're going to do is you're going to then just press edit. And then you're going to press the right uh, arrow to get all the way to the left. You're going to press a semicolon because everything is, all the pathways are separated by semicolons. And then I'm going to then pr just press uh, control V for paste. And I'm going to do all of this through, uh, you know, I'm not going to use my mouse and hover over it and then right click and all that stuff because that's not as accurate, I think. So I'm just going to uh, I'll, I'll walk you through it again. What you do is you just go, uh, and if you really think you're going to mess it up, you could you know, open up your text editor, open up a new thing, and press edit, and then press copy, you know, con control C and then hover over this and go control V and then that's your actual system path and then from there if you mess it up over here at least you've got a copy of it um, so you could always save this as a you know system path txt and it'll go ahead and save you know but then of course when you change it you know you want to like um, actually change that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redo this thing. I'm going to go path, edit, I'm going to hit the right arrow to go all the way to the left and I'm going to press now I put the path in my clipboard so just be careful what you have in your clipboard. So now I have to put re-put the MinGW in my clipboard. Okay so I'm going to go Control C, and then I'm going to go back to here, and it's click. It's on the the end of it, which is where I want it. I'm going to press a semicolon, and then I'm going to go Control V, and that's exactly what I want. Because before I had it like this, you know, where it was on Server 110 Tools bin. Okay, so now I put a semicolon there, and then I do this. So now it's on, you know, it says server 110 tools bin, then semicolon. The semicolon right over here separates everything. And then now this pathway right over here is going. So in other words, when I, when I call the compiler, it's going to look through every single pathway. And finally, it's going to see it when it gets to this one. So now when I go to here, so I'm now going to press uh, OK. I'm going to press OK, press OK. And then when I go to this over here, I can then go GCC, uh, you know, a little dash B. And then it's going to show me that I've actually got the GCC compiler installed in my system. So now if I go to uh, 
CLS clears it. So if I go to CD and I, I go to my um, my desktop, it's going to this right over here. Hello.cpp is what I want to compile. So I'm going to go G plus plus, and I'm going to go dash O, which means compile. And then I'm just going to go like hello.ex or oh, it's going to. I don't have to say exe. It's going to go ahead and add it to it. And then I got to go hello.cpp. So if I look in the directory again, I can see that I created an executable. So now in order to actually run it, I can then just go hello.exe, and then it's going to run. So now if I, and I can get rid of the system path because it's actually not uh, needed anymore. It's an old path. Now, I can actually do this, too. I can double-click on it, but you can see that that's exactly what it does when it's in Visual Studio. That's why we um, go uh, can.get, or, sorry, clear, can.ignore, can.get. And actually, we really only need... Um, just that in order to uh, make it work. So now we can recompile it. And all I'm doing is pressing the, the, the up or down arrows to get, because the command line actually remembers stuff. So I'm just pressing the up or down arrows to like, so now if I double click on it, it's gonna hold the window open until I you know, press a key. So that's how you install the MinGW compiler. And uh, so now you can use it to um, compile multiple files at once, too, if you want. So we'll get to that in another video. So all right, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.